All right, first off, let's start at the very beginning. Stamps. So there are three main types of stamps. The ones that most people are most common with are the rubber stamps on wood blocks. Um, they were sold like that for years and they're great and it's really my favorite way of stamping because you've got a lot of control. But the thing is, especially if you love stamping and you accumulate a lot of stamps, they take up a lot of space. So you're gonna find it takes up a lot more space to store um, stamps on wood blocks than it does unmounted stamps. And for unmounted stamps, there's two different kinds. One is cling rubber stamps, which are the most similar to the rubber on the wood block. These you use acrylic blocks with, and you also use acrylic blocks with the clear stamps. The clear stamps, the nice thing about them and the th reason why a lot of people love them is because you can see through them and they find it makes it a little bit easier to stamp with because you can position things exactly by being able to see through the stamp. The only thing is the acrylic stamps are a little bit softer than the rubber. So if you use the same pressure with them, often you'll get a smudged stamped image from this one because sometimes you press a little bit too hard. Whereas this one, you kind of have to press nice and firmly to get a clear image on it. The other thing that people have an issue with, and it's mostly with acrylic stamps, sometimes with rubber stamps, but it seems to be a problem more with acrylic stamps. Let me open this one up. When these are made, there is a release agent put on the mold that helps them come out of the mold easier. And that agent, and I realize I've already done that with this one, that agent makes it resist ink. So the very first thing I do, especially with acrylic stamps, when I open my package, is I take a white eraser, just a plain white school eraser, and I rub all over the stamping surface, and that removes that residue and helps your stamp to receive ink better. Now, the other thing you could do is do it, rub it on a t-shirt or a pair of jeans. That will do exactly the same as this does. I've also heard from people light sanding paper, but I've never tried that one because to me, that's the best way to ruin your stamp is something that's abrasive. Whereas these are not abrasive, you're never gonna ruin your stamp with it. I've been doing it for years and not one stamp has been ever destroyed by doing that. So after you do that, sometimes you'll have a little bit of eraser residue. So you're just gonna brush that off. And as soon as I've used one stamp for my set, because the second I open my set, I do the entire stamp, I know that that whole set has been done. It never has to be done again. And that's going to receive ink a little bit better. So this particular one here is a layering set. And one of the segments on this class has a segment on layering stamps. I'm not gonna use this exact one because I'm not sure of its availability, but there's one that I have that I know is available um, to people and I'll show you exactly how to use them. They're really quite fun and easy to use. So like I said, with rubber stamps, you may need to use the eraser trick if you found that you're having a hard time, especially with silhouette stamps because there's a bigger surface for the ink to stick to, sometimes those are, your, are the ones you're gonna have an issue with. But again, exactly the same trick. White eraser, rub it on, brush off the little eraser bits, and you'll be good to go. And again, once I do one, I do the entire set, so I just know the whole thing is done. Now for stamping inks. These are the main ones I'm gonna be using in this class. So Memento ink is a dye ink. It is fade resistant and water resistant. So I'll often use this one for when I am coloring because it's nice and simple. It's easy to clean off my stamp because it is just a dye ink. It's not a permanent ink. When I'm doing anything, especially with watercolor, I will use my stays on. It is a permanent ink. So what that means is when I go to clean my stamps, I need a special cleaner to clean the stays on off the stamps. Um, but usually it's, if a store sells the stays on, they usually sell the cleaner to it. So it's not that hard to find. The other thing we're gonna be using is a watermark stamp. So it's just a clear ink stamp. It's often used with embossing, although you can use some other inks with embossing as well, but that's what it's mainly used for. The other thing you can use with it is um, just create a watermark impression on your paper, just give it, it makes the tone of the cardstock just a shade darker in the pattern of whatever stamp that you use. And I typically have two of these because they do get stained after a while. This one's actually not too bad. So I'll have one that's stained and one that's clear. I can use the clear one or the non-stained one for my watermarking, 
This I tend to use with embossing powder that is not clear. So if I'm using gold or black or whatever embossing powder, you're never gonna see the ink. So I save my stained one for that. So um, even if yours does get stained, don't need to throw it away, you can still use it. The other thing that I, ink that I like to use often is Distress ink. So Distress is a water reactive dye ink. So there's some fun techniques that you can do with it and I probably won't be doing any of them with this class. I'll do, I've, I've used them with some other classes. But basically it's just a nice dye ink and it comes in 60 plus colors. I don't remember the exact amount right now, but there's a few different techniques that I'll be using it with. Because it's dye, it's very easy to get off your um, stamp to clean them. The other thing I wanted to mention, most ink pads, you can get refills for them. And I haven't pulled the refill up for this one yet. So think of your ink pad as the car and the refill ink as the gas. When you've used up the ink in the car, you just re-ink it. You don't need to buy a whole new stamp pad for it. You simply re-ink it. And I'll show you exactly how that is done. So I will typically squeeze it out on the pad. And you can typically tell when you're squeezing it out if it's sucking it up really quickly. That means your pad is fairly dry. As you're filling it up, you'll notice that it sucks it up slower. But one of these refill bottles will fill up a pad three, four, five times. Depends on how dry you let it get. Typically, I don't let it get very dry. I'll, as soon as I notice it drying out just a tiny little bit, I'll just add a squeeze of the reinker, and it's good to go. So that's good enough. I'm gonna leave it like that. The other thing, when I've reinked my pad, I'll put it, the lid back on and I'll just let it sit for a while, like about an hour before I go to use it. If I use it right after I re-ink, it's gonna be blotchy. If I let it sit for a while, the ink's kind of settled where it needs to go and I don't find I have any blotches with that. So that is all on the stamps and the inks that we're going to use throughout this class. Next, we are gonna talk about acrylic blocks and positioning tools.